I don't like to start off cranky. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> all right. But I, this whole thing, I, I, I am so off. First of all, the set is different. I, I, I'm, we're not wearing the shirts. I don't want to sound like Paul Anka's recording on the bus, but we're not wearing the shirts. <laughs> and you're on the wrong side. And uh, and uh, everything is, I, I, it's all wrong. And and we're doing this. You know why we're doing this? Do you know why we've changed it all up? I do. Why? Tell the people. Camera angles. Camera angles for social media. Social media. Apparently, if I look straight at you, ladies and gentlemen, you'll watch me on social media. If I do this, oh, no good. Lost you. I I, I just want to, I want to, I got to get out. I got to get out. I got to get out. May I make an observation? I am not meant. <laughs> may, may I make an observation? I'm not meant for this. May I make an observation? Please. It's coming from a good place. You're not Please. good with change. I'm not good with change. You're absolutely <laughs> is that, right. Is that pretty accurate? You're absolutely right. <laughs> And I will tell you something. It is it is appropriate that I say I got to get out because today's episode is about getting the hell out because this was the really that started us off. It was. We, we what I heard. Go ahead. Michael Caine, the venerated film actor, Michael Caine, announced he's retiring. And I went, <clears throat> really? Really? But he, so if they offer him $20 million <laughs> To be Q in the next jump Bond movie, he's going. No, I'm retired. Here's the deal. I'm retired. He's, 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 I can't do it anymore. He's an older I'm gentleman. I'm out. Calm down. Calm down. You're, can't you, remember the lines. I think you need to be drug tested. <laughs> There's something going on with you that I'm not aware of. Also, Brian Cranston announces his retirement, and then I see there are. Oh, hold on. We've got to roll it back. He's got stippy. I'm retiring, but not totally. Yes. I may show up for a day. How much are you offering? Yes. I, so we and wanted let me to get. Add, I know Brian Cranston. And I'm telling you... You know Brian Cranston. Oh, that's yeah, no, Brian Cranston. <laughs> uh, Brian is here because we have to get to the we bottom need, of this. We need to get some clarity. I, because my understanding is you, you, there's nothing about you where the word retiring... Six-time Emmy Award uh, winner. Oh, fuck him. Two Tonys, <laughs> an Olivier Award, a Golden Globe winner, an Oscar nominee, actor, producer, director, activist, mescal master... Mr. Brian Cranston is with How us How are you? Hello, too. my friend. He was great until he has to bring up your Emmy win. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> I could bring one for you. I have oh, one. Brian, let it go. No, I don't even. I have an mind. Emmy. You know what? F all of you. I have an Emmy. Uh, it, it is daytime. Weirdest. Way. It's a daytime. Emmy. Daytime. Yeah, yeah daytime. okay. <laughs> it's, right. it's, right. it's not. A, it's valid. Yeah, I don't you know what? Two it. wings. Two wings, and it holds the ball. That's hold all on, I hold on, hold on. <laughs> daytime, but yeah. it's you know it's important. Yes. Yeah. So it's good. It's good to see you. By the way, the retirement. Please, was it this? I'm retiring. Was it a wink? No. So it so, said. Here's what. Now ahead. wait. This comes. It, it said in a profile of the bro of Breaking Bad actor published in British GQ magazine. It's like that Cranston says here. he plans to take a break from acting in two in 2026. Among his plans, going to France <laughs> to spend more time with his wife, who, who's not in France, by the way. And wants to live in a small <laughs> village and dabble in gardening. And I went. <laughs> now we're talking about Michael Caine. <laughs> but I love. I love also that, honey. I want to spend more time with you but it has to be geographically <laughs> different and advantageous to me near wine yeah. growing so I, what's I, the answer I, well i wanted to spend more time with the wife i just didn't stipulate that it was my wife <laughs> that we wanted no um uh, doing this interview some uh, for british gq she's she said wow for the past 24 or 5 years you've been working non-stop and how does that and i go well it's been wonderful i mean uh, great opportunities i'm living a great life and it's terrific, although I will admit that at times it feels like I could be derivative of my own work because I think I'm kind of running out. I'm being depleted of life experience. So for the last years, you guys know this, if you go from show to show to movie to theater to doing, that's not real life. Right. That's living in a little bit of a yeah. bubble. And so I, I felt like... Everything is going out, but I'm not being replenished. And so it felt like I, I, I need to hit the pause button. These were my exact words. I, I feel like I need to hit the pause button, a reset, uh, to, to just touch ground again and right. take a little bit of a break. And then, you know, see what happens. But does that mean selling? We, but, it also said selling the Mescal company. It meant selling the production company. Is that yeah, accurate? Yeah. Let go of that stuff? Yeah. I, I think what's going to happen is is that I, I 
we, we were talking before the show started about the simplicity of life. Yeah. And Peter, you were saying, I could live in a one bedroom I room. Could. I, I don't. Could. And, and there is something to that about when we age, we, we sense that we need less than we really have. Sure. And we want to lighten the load because it does feel like an anchor sometimes. It does. You really want to get rid of the ballast. And I, I would rather have more experiences than more things. And so that's what I'm looking for. And did you, but did, did you say 2020? They quote you as 2026. Did you put like a, I think at this moment I'll. No, step I away? said I'm going to be 70 in 2026. Uh huh. And as a marker, sometime Around after that. There, yeah. yeah. I said sometime after that. And so they truncate everything yeah. and put it out there. It's fantastic. And in, in the headline, it said Brian Cranston's retiring. Right. I never that's use, as right you here. know, Jason, I never use the word retiring. Right. Uh, we're so lucky to do what we do. Oh, I man. Am. Oh, man. Uh, but, but I will tell you, my, my daughter, Taylor, said, Dad, you're never going to retire. And I said, there are circumstances that would, would make me retire. And that is, uh, if, if acting becomes arduous, if it becomes a task mm -hmm. that I no longer love, then I'll retire. If, it be, if I get stressed out and worried and... S and not able to retain and and I'm, I'm not having fun right i'm done yeah i'll walk away can i ask you something though just going back to that that's off the retirement for a second it, 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 i think this is in the gq article too you've gone to therapy with your wife yeah before you got married and all the way through to now which is pretty pretty brave because you got to confirm i always say when you're on vacation they always have these people who come down activities directors yeah to keep you busy because if you're not your significant other is going to bring up something you don't want. I want another child. I'm not happy. And oh, I'm I'm going to feed sharks right now. I'm I'm parasailing. I'm doing yeah. death-defying stuff so Cave that we diving. don't have to talk because they keep you busy. Feeding the sharks. The fact that you voluntarily <laughs> you voluntarily go to therapy is pretty evolved, I would say. Well, we've been we've been married for uh, it'll be close to thirty-five years soon, and. Um, uh, it's been great. Robin's a, a wonderful partner, a loving wife. I love her. And I, once I found her when I was in my early 30s, uh, I met her when I was 29 years old. And uh, it's like, oh, okay, I don't want to mess this up. I had already been married once before, been through several relationships that didn't really last mm -hmm. very long. And uh, when you're in your 30s, it's time to go, okay, let's let's be realistic about this. <laughs> You know, what are the steps that I made before that were mistakes? And what are the steps that I, I know that I need to change yeah. to? And you start making those adjustments. Let amazing. me ask you something about that I've never asked you, because I know Robin, uh, I mean, we've had many lovely occasions of being together. Robin was a, um, you know, just like you, a good, solid journey, journey woman, working actor. Yeah. And then I guess when, when Taylor was born, did she start to pull back on yeah. that? What... Do you have any take on on how she has felt about sort of, I, I don't mean to suggest that she's relinquished her career, but she's working less than she probably thought she might have 30 years ago. What was that experience for her? Because that's a kind of a retirement as it was, well. It, no, it was definitely a retirement. Yeah. She did relinquish. She did. Right. Yeah. She was 39 when she had our daughter. And the roles that were coming to her in her 20s she started working when she was still going to ucla and working like crazy if if you're if you have some talent and in those days if you were attractive you're working yeah. you better be working in right, your 20s right. because that old adage of they they chew uh, uh, young actresses up in their 20s and spit them out in their 30s right. There's some merit to that. Yeah. And so by her 30s and thir mid 30s, the the jobs that were she was up for and being offered were fewer and fewer and smaller and smaller. Yeah. And she said, I just don't want to get to the point where all I say is, doctor, your charts, <laughs> you know, and then and, and then walk away. It's like, I, don't, I just don't want to do that. And so she fell out of love with acting because it was leaving her. Yeah. And it, it kind of broke up with her. And so she said, okay. And the timing was perfect. She was in this new chapter with our, our young baby yeah. and embraced that and is a terrific mom. Yeah, she is. 
And you know lovely what? Woman. The, the big thing with, with, with us or with retirement is about purpose. It's, it's fascinating. There's new trends. I didn't tell Jason the age, but in 1900, the year 1900, do you know what the average global lifespan was? The age? At 19, at, 1900. In, in 1900. 1900. Global average lifespan, probably 50? And 30, I guess 50, 31. 31? And now it's 70, 76. Today it's 76. And what they're doing, because I knew you were coming in to talk what about What do you attribute that to, Peter, by the way? Um, all the advances in medicine, pre preparative stuff. I mean, the, the future for retirement, other people, retirement, and maybe us, when you think of autonomous cars, think about how isolated an, el an elderly person was or they were put in a retirement home yeah. waiting to disintegrate. Now they're trying to build communities that are multi-generational. Right. They found out the, the communities that have trees and grass and stuff, when you're a patient in a hospital, if you can see trees and grass, you're out two times quicker. You see trees than, and smoke than, grass, you're even a smoke oh, grass. Star. Yeah, you don't want to In leave. my head, you said it, I was You're thinking, out twice as quick, but you don't want to get up. Is what the, 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 Why does he have his career and I have mine? We're the same person. Because he's, just, look, cause look at him. Because he's, he's, you know. Well, anyway, wait, 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 wait. Don't fly by that so I noticed quickly. as I started to say stuff. At no, him? no, no, I mean. What is that all no, about? No, he's as a, as a Plaid whole, shirt, plaid shirt. By the way, may I bring this up? Bit of a beard, may bit of a beard. Do you have clothes that you wear still from any of your shows? Oh, God, yes. Okay, true or false? Because we're going to do true or false <laughs> okay. later, Cranston or no Cranston. Is this a George Costanza shirt? It could very well be a George Costanza shirt. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <Yeah. laughs> How far did your clothing go? But what show? Malcolm? Further back? I had, I, I actually, <laughs> I, um, I did a soap opera Love 40 years ago in New York. When I first moved to New York 40 years ago. And up until just recently, I actually still had a coat from the you show. Bet. And it was like, and my wife's going, what are you doing? And I said, what do you mean? She goes, you still have this. It's got shoulder pads. <laughs> <laughs> but it makes you look cool. Yeah, it's like. I got to tell you, I, I have so much George clothing that I think it was either Us or People Magazine <laughs> did a side by side of me and as George and me as me on the street in the same outfit and then did Who Wore It Best? <laughs> 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 you have to, well, he has baby feet and baby hands, so he has George shoes. I do. Do you yeah. have George underwear? Do you have undergarments that were George? They didn't supply. <laughs> my, my God. Believe me, I had them. But anyway, the, the longevity thing, you got all kinds of telemedicine advances now where people who couldn't see a doctor have right. ac access that way. You're going to have assistive living, and they're building these communities, Brian, now they are all multi-generational because they realize... The, an older person can be in an apartment in New right. York City and they're converting all of these businesses that are going out of business right. and the buildings are empty into multi-generational housing. That's, and they're doing it all over the world. That's good. So, well, and they don't have, because they also don't have housing for seniors. Right. It's diminished and there's going to be 50% fi of those over 50 are going to be selling their houses and downsizing any minute now. They're calling it the silver tsunami. Silver, silver tsunami. tsunami. I think Lawrence Fishburne will voice that character <laughs> as well. There's, a, there's a, a documentary out now called Blue Zones. Have you heard of the Blue Zones? Yeah. Uh, no. And it's talking about living well past 100. Oh, yes. Living I have heard of this. Into yes. 100. Yeah. And this guy traveled the world to find out, well, what's the common denominator here? And basically, it's keep moving. It's do not, do not, do not sit down on that couch. Right. Get up and get out right. and keep moving. Keep challenging yourself. Stairs, hills. So they were going to Okinawa and in, in, in parts of Italy and things. And, and there's hills. There. They're walking every single day. No preservatives. Mostly mm. vegetables, legumes, and things like that. And some meat. We do it the opposite in America. Sure. Yes. We look at meat and potatoes right. as the main... Do you want a side? They even diminish it by side dish. Do you want a? Do you want a side dish of a little curry, broccoli you know, of right. a little broccoli, <laughs> yeah, right. a little side dish yeah. of corn or something? No, it's so oh, it's it's keep moving, eat a well balanced meal and and. Can uh, I just say something yeah. though? Um, that's not a life. Moving and, and vegetables is, uh, you know. If I have to check out at ninety five, moving with, in a, with a burger, uh, you know, ninety five <laughs> on, on the couch. Yeah. You're being you're being my progressive father, there. My father mm -hmm. passed away at the age of ninety one. My mother at ninety eight. Wow. So genetically, and they were worse than me. They smoked. They oh. they did all kind. They never exercised a day in their life. I should I should make a hundred 
right, Peter? The difference is they didn't or it'll know this just stuff. feel like it. <laughs> it feels like it. Well, yeah. Earl Palmer, it's a writer on a lot of the shows, yeah. that used to say, the doctor told me uh, he's got to start doing 10 treadmill, and I'll live 10 extra years. He said, it's 10 years of treadmill. Yeah, so <laughs> there's no, no way I'm Nobody doing wants that. I know. So, wait, I want to go back answer. to something you said. Yeah. Yeah. What, so, you, yeah, yeah. You, so you said, look, I'll act until it's not funny. So thinking along the lines of what lies ahead, if I said, okay, acting is now off the table, now what do you do? I, I would be an adventurer. I'd go travel the world. I'd go see things that I've never seen before. Would you, would, do you, in your mind, would you cease to live a life in which you express your artistry? I don't think I could. I think I could take a break from that. Yeah. So that I can replenish. But then at some point, you have to then let the. But if the I said to you, it, it cannot be as an actor. How would you use, what would you do? How would you do it? I'd, I'd, I'd start writing, uh, no, start, I uh, continue writing. Yeah. Actually. He's a good writer. By yeah. the way, he wrote an autobiography. I know. It was one of the best ones I've ever read. Why are you whispering that? Because I don't want to Yeah, why it. did he whisper? I don't want let it, it be known. Where do you think I got some of my <laughs> information about him? I'm aware. I'm aware. What, man did you read the book? Did, you didn't I read skimmed it. it. Yeah. <laughs> but like Woody Allen he's said. Not, I, he's not from the readers. I took Evelyn <laughs> Wood and I read War and Peace. I think it's about Russia. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I didn't have time. He's just coming in. As soon as we booked him, I started yeah, reading sure. the damn thing. Yeah, no, I understand. It's a good I know a lot about it. Was fun, it was fun to do. And very cathartic, really. When's yeah. your book coming out? It, it not. Why? You and I have talked about this. We I know we have, but I, I, I'm going to keep pestering you until you write the damn book. Sure, um, an interesting book. I, yes. I have, I have um, some interesting stories uh, that I do tell. Um, I have life, life lesson stories that I tell in, in a show that I do. Um, I, I, it, it comes from a number of things. One is... <laughs> um, I, I, I'm not saying this in a way that um, it, it should be demeaning to anybody. My per personal ego is not up to saying I merit this. Um, I don't feel like my life is that unique or special or important that it should be chronicled in a book and people should read this. That's one of the things. Another thing is, is that I think I'm different from most um, people in the public eye in that I find myself as I get older, and maybe we can talk about this, wanting not to engage with the world less, but I don't want to stand out. I would like to travel with a little anonymity again and observe and participate, not as elevated in any way, but a quieter mm -hmm. journey. And I feel like putting a putting here's my story, here's my stuff out into the world would be the opposite, would get me the opposite effect of that. So that's kind of why I don't do it. Are you saying that my ego was so huge? I'm not saying it, I'm inferring it. That was, a subtext. That was inferring. subtext I got. <laughs> no, no. I, one of the things, like, I, 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 seriously, <laughs> your book, Marty Short's book, yeah. um, and I'm not remembering, there's a, th a third... Um, Kevin uh, Pollack's book was really good. I haven't read Kevin's oh, book. Oh, it's really good. But what I loved about your book was it, and you even sort of set it up this way, was about the, the kind of different life roles that you've played yeah. and how you navigated each of them. And some of them were very difficult and some of them were very joyous and some of them were rather extraordinary. I thought that was wonderful because I thought it, it, it is inspiring people to A, look for those journeys and dare those journeys, but also to navigate the ones that are harder. I thought Marty's book was spectacular because he's had a fair amount of tragedy in his life, right. and yet he always finds a way to happiness. And I thought that was an important story to tell. I don't personally feel I necessarily have that stuff. Maybe I do. Maybe if someone was looking at my life and said, no, you've got this and this, but I don't feel that. You know, I'm, you and I have talked about this. I always feel, and I'm working on this in my own therapy, when I walk into a room of known people, I go, I shouldn't be here. <laughs> they don't want me here, and I shouldn't Do be you here. ever feel that, Brian? No. He doesn't. I can tell you. He no, really you doesn't. have a, you, you, it's really funny, knowing you a bit, because we've been on in the past and we've known each other well. When you walk in, it's almost scary. There's, there's a, a certainty about you. You know, certain people follow people who have certainty, okay? Politicians who, you have kind of that presence where you come in and you command attention even before you've said anything. You've like a big presence when you walk in. I don't, I, well, thank you. I, I, I don't feel that I, I do it in a, in a boastful way. 
I I want to in, when I'm fan facing when I'm out and I'm, I feel like the more assertive I am the more I can control that a little bit uh. and handle it and then move on because mm -hmm. like you Jason I I'm I want a, a quieter life too in my personal life when I'm not working when I'm not promoting I really want to sit back and not have anything going on I, I like that solitude yeah. and quietness and reading and doing things like that um but yeah i i i was challenged to do that book because uh my agent came to me and said there was there's a publisher who would like to meet with you about writing a book and i go what book <laughs> they go whatever book you want to write and i went really wow could i write a book i don't know if i can yeah and that was the it was like man that would be i'd really find out if i could do this or not and um I enjoyed it. I enjoyed that that solitude yeah. of writing and just retelling stories, and then putting it in in an order that had some connectivity to it. Um, you what like, I, but you like challenges. I I do, but I I try to learn from them. For example, when I did a book on tape, you know, the the Audible book, um, it was called "The Things They Carried" by Tim O'Brien, mm -hmm. and it was a beautiful book. Uh, and two things I learned from that. One was I wanted to read this book. It was about a reluctant uh, soldier in Vietnam. He was really, he, he kind of, big. and a, a ton of characters. And I wanted to read the book, but I never did. And then Playtone, Tom Hanks's company called and said, we're doing, for, for Veterans Day, we're doing a bunch of books related to military service. Right. And... We'd like to, to have you read one. And I go, hey, yeah, which which ones are you? Well, we have this, this, that. we have the things they carry. Oh, let me do that one. I said, perfect. So I read the book and and then I recorded. And two things, I read the book because it was connected to a job and that triggered a little, a little something in me like, Oh, so I don't do anything for my own personal pleasure, but it's okay to do if it's connected to right. work. Mm. What does that say about me? And I, I really have a lot of reflection on that. The second thing was I'm not very good at doing those narrations. I took much longer than anyone else, apparently, and I discovered that I have a little bit of dyslexia. Oh, and, wow. and, and I would do a line or two or three or four, a paragraph, and the engineer would say okay let's go back and uh, let's do this you said this and you said that and you said this and i i had no idea wow. that i was inverting words and yeah, things yeah. like that and i went wow so it was a little uh, trepidatious for me to step in and i didn't really enjoy it i've i've done a few of them and i have enjoyed it but for me it's i'm, I'm just trying to emulate jim dale reading all the harry <laughs> potter books yeah. it was so miraculous yeah but Going back to what you asked him about, what I've always it, noticed and admired about you, Brian, even before Malcolm, um, when we first met, you, you, you show up fully for things, whatever that may mean at the time. Um, it, it always felt to me like you were quite comfortable in your skin and that because of that, you could say, well, here I am, I'm here, I'm available, uh, uh, and I'm present. And I think that's what you mean by that sort of... He, yeah, in reading... And a, not mo pe most people, myself included, uh, that's part of the work in my therapy, is to just allow just myself to, to go, hey, I'm okay. This is as full as I can be, and I'm here, and I'm happy to be here, and I, let me participate without, you know, m prejudicing myself <laughs> that I shouldn't be in the room. But you, to my eye, have always shown up fully present. But I think I think that came with taking on that character. Of I took on a, a, a if ever I was in a place where I was not comfortable, uh -huh. I took on the character of a guy who is comfortable. Uh -huh. yeah. um, I got a call from James Corden uh, a few years ago, whose wife was uh, pregnant and going to deliver in a few weeks, and he was going to take the time off, and called and said and said oh my God, my wife is delivering now and I have to be with her. Could you come in and guest host, and host the show. my show? And I went, yes. 
Mm -hmm. And I've never done this before. So I go to the studio. I had two hours before we're dressing and getting out there in front of the audience. And I'm in there with the writers and we're th putting thoughts and ideas together. It was, it was like doing Saturday Night yeah. Live too. And it was like, Whoa. and then out we go. And before I walked out there, I went, how do I do this? Oh, I've watched Carson all my life. I'm just going to play the character of a guy who is a talk show host. And so that's what I put. I put on the veneer right. and the wardrobe of that guy and right. stepped out. Right. And that that's what made it happen. If I thought for a second, Brian, you, what are you doing here? What I, Then I couldn't do it. Do you know what I mean? So sometimes yes, it's just putting that forward. But the fact and that you said yes, and in reading about you, it's so funny. Jason always makes fun of me because the preparation and the notes. Yeah. I've done a million years of radio. And this I is all you, feel insecure. This is all insecure. you. But Brian, but, I'm reading about Asteroid City. So you're a narrator in Asteroid City, yeah. which I love that. I got to ask you about how that movie's even done. How, yeah. how, but as the narrator, they said you sat there all day long making notes, millions of notes about stuff, and yet you're the narr narrator, but you wanted a specificity, so you like control. You like to know when you sit down, there's no question about what I'm doing. I get it, and I got why. I thought through the process, and I know I'm there. Is that accurate? You like to control that situation. Well, yeah, it's uh, just like when we go on talk shows to, to do something, the worst thing you can do is not prepare. Right. If you go on and, and you're just completely blank. So all these talk shows have, uh, you know, producers who are uh, uh, producing that particular Same. segment yeah. and they talk to you ahead of time. And I'm thinking, what story, what just happened? Where's, where's it going? What can I do? And, and so I have these things in my back pocket. And then when you're teed up and out comes the story right. and every, everybody has a good time and you've, you've done your job. I don't want to go out there blank, but you never get through everything you discussed yeah. <laughs> when you're talking right. about going on a talk show. Right. Yeah. And so I just want to be prepared to do that. And Did so, you do Ferguson when he was on the, yeah. that was the most fascinating experience because Nothing we discussed in the pre-interviews. That's right. Happened on the air. In fact, it got to the point where it, early on, where Craig Ferguson would take his cards and rip them yeah. up and throw them out. Yeah, because he didn't. He would just. And I just loved doing a show because he was able to do that. Most people think a talk show is is a talk show. It's not. It's an entertainment show. And um, but Craig managed to get both by having a real conversation and still somehow managing to draw out some stuff that was really entertaining. Yeah, it really was. But you said something to me the other night, Jason, and I'm hoping I can share, and if not, we can edit. Okay. We were backstage mm -hmm. at the charity event. Right. And you said to me, and I, and I embrace this because I think it's a, a wonderful um, discovery, and everyone's felt this. You said, five years ago, five years ago I would have been backstage going crazy, just clawing, trying to figure out, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, I'm about to perform, oh my God, oh my God, I'm, how am I gonna do this? I would have gone crazy, but you said, I'm not, I'm not that guy anymore. Right. And you started wondering, and these words were ringing to me, you said, I'm really looking for and finding my authentic self. Right. Who was I in those days, and who am I really? And what am I presenting as performer? You sing, you dance, you act, and as a performer, that that kind of clouds the Jason Alexander, right? It kind of it's it's on the vanguard of what you present, and sometimes you you need to strip that away right. and and be well confident that it's just you. You know what what I was also mentioning in that conversation is all of us, everybody, but certainly performers have avatars that we become and i remember in college my my college girlfriend after being with me for a month or so said do you know everybody at this school thinks you are the cockiest son of a bitch in the world and i went are you kidding me i'm scared to death i, I i'm i don't think i should be here i think anybody's going to know that anymore i keep thinking they're going to ask me to leave and she goes oh i know that now because i've been with you <laughs> but you have an avatar she didn't say avatar but she, she, yeah. you have a persona that covers and protects that to the point of almost an arrogance or a cockiness. And I went, I am not aware of that. And so early on, even in my late teens, early 20s, I was aware that 
there were personality traits happening in me that I couldn't account for. I'm sure they were part of my insecurities. Mm -hmm. And when I went back into therapy about seven years ago, and my therapist said, okay, you know, because we had been through it, Dana and I went to therapy, I stayed in therapy for years. She said, what do you want to do? I said, I would, I'm starting my third act, talking about retirement. Yeah. I'm not sure I know who I authentically am. And I sure would like to before I get out of here. Wow. And that's what we've been working on. And, and that has pushed me closer to what I feel you embody, which is being able to walk into a space and go, I'm good. I, I'm here because I should be here. I want to be here or somebody else needs me to be here. I can fill this space. I don't have to blow it away. I don't have to blow the walls out. I don't have to be something I'm not. I am allowed to be here and appreciate the moment and the people around me. That is a relatively new thing for me. Well, this is something that I learned about 25, 30 years ago, is to present yourself, to go in prepared, excited, and and giving the person, or if you're an audition s sequence, you, you give it everything you've got without an attachment to an outcome. Mm -hmm. If you go in there wanting something in return, you're dead. But if you go in there going, here's the idea. How about this, 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 and this? No expectation. And no expectation, then right. walk away. It's pure. Yeah. It's like, the, 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 wait, 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 wait. Everything changed once I took that attitude. That from an actor's standpoint, I need to go into that room to do my job, not to get, get a job. Not to get the job. I remember you saying that. Whoa. Yeah, that's can, can we? Can we, because we're running out of time, can oh. we do, find yeah. out how well, you guys are pretty close. Okay. I know for a long time, but not as well as Jason does. Cranston or not Cranston? I can ask these questions sure. and see if he's right or not. <laughs> and this is <some> interesting. <laughs> You see these you see these 300 pages this is what the man does but and this I want to tell you something but it also gets me to know you yes. he sends yeah. them to me and says read these don't read these but he <laughs> sends them to me and says don't read them and you don't read anything do you I do I actually have you to do. prepare because otherwise Why do you this, pull the curtain this back schmo, <laughs> this schmo will go on about stuff I have to keep pulling him back to the thing I it's all to the thing. Thing. I yeah. save his ass it's the anyway, it makes I, know, is, I, know. I will say him look intelligent all right so here we go the podcast is all his idea if it makes me millions is it or is it not if I wasted my time Spent two years traveling the U.S. by motorcycle with his brother. I know that's a fact. I read this book. Okay, but it's fascinating. Okay, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> Was suspected in a murder case, yes or no? That Suspect sounds in a murder case. strangely familiar. I think so, yes. As How was, was it you I, read by the, the book, way. Ryan? Yeah. Go ahead, Drew. You? Yeah, I was, for a, I was for five minutes. Five minutes. I discovered a dead body en route to the subway one day, and I called it in. And it was a very strange situation. The person was in a locked car, no signs of struggle, no signs of anything. It looks like a healthy young person sit, sat in a car and died. And um, the police started going, why'd you walk this route? I yeah. go, well, I live there in the subway. You come this way every time? Are you? And I went, <laughs> yeah. am I? Excuse me. Yeah. Am I a suspect right now? <laughs> and you, and there, you, was a, there was a tinge of, a, of kind of titillation at that moment. <laughs> well, I, I kind of went, no, this kind is kind of cool. Well, you I can could, ask I me could questions. Do this. I'm kind of badass. <laughs> so in your case? In my case, it was a, 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 a Chinese cook at a, at a restaurant in... Uh, in Daytona Beach, Florida, when I was uh, 21 years old, and he was a miserable human being. So I and many other people talked about how we'd kill him. Uh, I would chop him up, and I'd put him in his own you know, walk, and I would stir him up. He was just a horrible human being. Well, that horrible human being met his demise just as the same time I was back on my motorcycle taking off, and the cops came in and said, is anybody not here anymore who talked about hurting or killing putting him to walk maybe Peter Wong <laughs> and they and they said uh, uh, Brian Crash no yeah. kidding so like an APB went out yeah they pick put up on an APB wow <laughs> isn't that great <laughs> but I had no <laughs> idea yeah I did you know, yeah, tooling along. Yeah. I'm not thinking you were going to take yes, I am. <laughs> what was great was you weren't just going to dismember him. We were going to do a walk dish. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. What do you think goes good with this? All right. Um, I, know, I, I always wanted to ask you about this, so I've included this. Was once covered in 10,000 real bees. Oh, on Malcolm, I believe you did that. Yeah, Didn't so I we saw that. Okay. bee beard. Was that real or was it CGI? Or you, look at the face. Look, here's oh. Brian's angry face. I got oh, stung twice. Yeah, I got stung twice. One on the shoulder and one in the Why nuts. Why would you do that? 
Yeah. Oh my yeah. God. Yeah. Well, here's the thing. When you're covered with bees from your head to your waist and completely covered, and the only thing that's uh, visible is your uh, little circle around your face, um, the idea of being stung should not come as a surprise to you. <laughs> <laughs> and it did not. And it was like, so I got stung and I had to kind of move a little bit. And I go, oh, I think I was stung. And and the, the beekeeper goes, where? And he's ready to pre- prepare it. I go, in my scrotum. And he goes, you're on your own. <laughs> <laughs> did they have an EpiPen? Why did you say, this is a man who says yes to everything, obviously. Yeah, I like I liked taking I like taking chances and, and, and trying things that I'm, unfamiliar with in fact there's a you know the alexander technique sure uh this is the jason alexander technique um no there's there's another organization called the alexander technique and the one one of the phrases that the uh, the founder uses in that is is this is that if you only do what you know you will never do what you don't know and that that just really stuck with me. And it's like, it's, it helps me get out. If I ever get complacent, I, it gets me out and keep trying something new. Keep seeing you're when you're going to fail. I'm laughing because it takes me back to the picture of you. you with the, with the bees. It's, it's the yeah. funniest visual I've ever seen. However, I went, he's out of his freaking mind. I mean, I can't believe they got Now, you. just by comparison, Rene Russo and I, well, shoot. <laughs> Rocky Bullwinkle had to run through a field of tall grass out in the uh, uh, a ranch up in, in Northern California. That could be very dangerous, and actually. Before, thank you. Yes. Before we did it, they sent the snake wrangler through oh who God. pulled several rattlesnakes out of our path. 40 minutes later, they go, okay, we're good to go. I go, you don't want to <laughs> send the snake, the snake guy through send again? He go, well, he cleared the path. I go, and the memo went out to the other snakes <laughs> that this path is no good. So it's they wanted to film it in fast motion so it would look like we really ran. I went, you won't need to. Just run it at normal speed. You won't believe how fast these fat little legs can go. <laughs> All right. So let's do a new thing. Yep. How about this? You once spent six weeks learning to roller skate. Well, it wasn't six weeks. Oh, he's, oh you're supposed to guess. I, uh, he, 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 yeah. I did he this actually, for a reason. He it, bled me on this it, one. It, it wasn't six weeks. Uh, we had, I had about uh, two and a half, three weeks maybe to before that episode on Malcolm was happening. So I had to quickly get on, on board with that. And you did, it was hilarious. And Jason had the same. I had to learn in a week. Ooh. I went to an audition for a musical I eventually did called The Rink. Yeah. And in the first audition, they go, you roller skate, right? And I go, absolutely. Never been on them <laughs> yes. in my life. So I rented skates at a store where you had to give them your shoes. Yeah. So now I'm, I'm in a pair of skates and I don't know what to do. And the only place I could think of where they're skating at the time, because this was 1984, was... Central Park? Central Park. Yeah. So I crawled up to get to Central Park to where the guys with the boom boxes yeah. were. And I saw two guys and I went, guys... I have to learn how to do this in a week. Can you help me? And they said, well, the first thing you're going to do is get those stoppers off your skates. I went, those are the <laughs> things keeping me alive. They pulled, they pushed me on my ass, took the stoppers out. Oh. And then legitimately tried to teach me to skate. And I, it was good enough that I could get the job. And then, then we went into skate school for several months. But, <clears throat> but yeah, in a week skate I had to get school. something. Yeah, they, they put the six of us in the show. <laughs> We went to the Roxy Roller Rink in oh, New yeah. York, and yeah. I will never forget this woman's name. Her first name was April, and I believe her last name was Alan, but I know that's also the character on the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. <laughs> but April uh, was a champion roller skater, beautiful young woman, and she got us in, two, in six weeks prior to rehearsal. She got six guys who had never been on skates skating like yes. champs. We were playing <clears throat> soccer on roller skates. Wow. Yeah. My guy was Fred Talixon, who was a choreographer for that that show on Broadway that you oh Starlight Express. Starlight Express, <laughs> and he was terrific, and he got me going, and, and I you could did it. You do could do spins the whole bit, yeah. and shoot the duck. Yeah, and the shoot the duck. Oh, yeah. oh, I remember shooting. Yeah. The now duck. I feel yeah. left out. Really yeah. left out. Yeah. Um, he is or is not a military code breaker. A military code, code breaker. You can break military codes. Well, why would, see, here's the thing with your Just stupid Just answer the quizzes. question. This is what why would you even put that on the table if it I'll was, tell you why. If it was I'll tell you complete what. horse crap? Yes or no? Yes. No. Complete no. horse crap. No. <laughs> it's complete horse You know what it was? Catch this. This is no wow. Johnny Cash. Johnny Cash was a, a, a military code breaker. In fact, it's reported he was the first American to hear news of the death of Joseph Stalin. Johnny Cash. Huh. 
right? Like, whoa. Um, I had to walk cry, that line. Can cry on cue. <laughs> can cry on cue. Yes or no? Brian Cranston? Mm -hmm. Well, who else? He's sitting here. Who else would I be I, asking about? I, I, I would imagine you can. Yeah, look, he's, he's tearing up it. right now. He's doing it. <laughs> you know, he's thinking about driving here. Um, we used to, on the soap operas, uh, the, the, Look at that. The, yeah, the, the now, women. Do you do it physically or do you do it by uh, wow. memory? Or? Both. It's a both wow. physical thing. And, and the physical part of it, the women on the soap opera who, you know, you're, they would call it a cry day. I have a cry day on Thursday. And so they would start hydrating, hydrating, and you just get really hydrated and then you put your mind to it. Focus and then bang, bang, it starts coming. Margot Robbie, I, I saw an wow. interview where they said, uh, Can you cry on cue? And she went, Sure. And they said, Can you do it now? She said, Which eye? <laughs> and then she did. You don't have to think about like getting stung in the balls or anything that just comes? <laughs> no, that would make me happy. So that was a pleasurable moment. <laughs> but you didn't have it's to. The only thing touching just, his balls wow. in a very long time. Wow. You met, <laughs> did, he, did he or did he not meet Charles Manson? Yeah, I did read that, that you were on the Spawn Ranch taking a horse riding lesson it's or something. Exactly Lucky day. Right. Lucky day. Yeah. It was exactly right. Wow. Surely. And, and you found out afterwards that he was Charles Manson, but no, it he, was creepy enough. But it was creepy enough at the moment, at that moment. It was very creepy because he was high as a kite on horseback and he was being, um, his reins of his horse were being held by someone else and he was just undulating on this horse but he had no control and he was just flopping Jeez. around like it was the weirdest thing and he had the <clears throat> blackest <throat> blackest eyes yeah everything was black about it and his hair down below his shoulders and he was just wow God, wow yeah, wild. hey kids let's go for a riding lesson at the spawn ranch yeah, spawn yeah. ranch wow um okay as we said a lot of written about you it's not accurate does does this man actually have a project assessment scale where he has a numerical system for deciding on roles he takes things he's going to do well that brings us back to michael kane with which we began this thing the michael kane once said how does he decide on a role he said if i open a script and it says the tundra a frozen wasteland i'll put that script down <laughs> if it says nice a gorgeous sun-filled beach <laughs> bikini-clad women Splashing through the waves, <laughs> I make that motion picture. <laughs> I'll make that. So, do you have a whatever the equivalent would be the Ben Franklin ledger sheet where you have the pluses and minuses, and at certain tally you go, yeah, yeah. I'll do that. I, 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 it's, uh, it's, it's called the cap system. Like it's the Cranston Assessment Project. Uh, yeah, and I do. I had to, uh, I, during the great good fortune of, of things happening uh, for me, uh, the energy that an actor puts out in trying to find work is matched with the energy, if you get lucky, of the energy coming at you for work. Right. And it's the better place to be, of course, but you're still trying to figure out what you should do. And I had to come up with a system that that valued e these these things and not be taken in. So the amount of money that was being offered is never on the system. The money is relative to me. I'm sure. not money motivated. I don't I don't want to be poor, but it's not something that motivates me. So if I'm retired and I've got plenty of dough and someone says, you want 20 million to go do that? I go, yeah, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm okay. Right. I, I don't need to do that if I'm. <clears throat> so, but what's on there is first and foremost is the, the quality of the writing. Because to, to me, that's the foundation of all performance art is, is how well is this structured? What is the story? Did it move me? Is it? Did it resonate? Is it important? And those, it went, if I react to it strongly, uh, I'm in. Mm -hmm. um, I did Little Miss Sunshine. I had one day on Little Miss right. Sunshine because I reacted so strongly to reading the script. And I went to the directors and I said, I, I would love to be in your movie. And they said, we already have Greg Kinnear. We already have Steve Carell. There's no part for you. And I said, what about this, this character who is the book agent for, for Greg Kinnear, uh, Stan Grossman? And they go, that guy works one day. And I said, perfect. Won't, won't. And so I did that sh movie. Mm -hmm. Everyone I've talked to loved that movie. Uh -huh. And so what I realized from that is they were giving me praise like, oh my God, you were so good. You were great in that movie. And I was like, huh, 
the the part didn't warrant that at all. Right. And I realized, oh, I'm in the high tide. You you attach yourself to really well written material, yeah. and it lifts you yeah. up. Yeah. But that, you use it like I read it. You used it to decide on what apartment to rent, as far as distance, and you use it for other things. Well, I, I, I do take <laughs> into consideration. Guy. Yeah, yeah, there yeah. you go. Yeah, I, I do. I, I didn't realize that until recently that I have a numerical kind of system for things. Uh, and yet yeah. you still came here, which is really amazing. I guess we... we well, it was it was on the low toss end. Up, toss but up, toss up. I had nothing else going on. <laughs> yeah. And that's the other thing. That yeah. was the other thing. All right, the last one on this... That, was, that was Robinson. Get out of that. Has Get this out. man tamed a lion? What? Tamed a lion. Has he ever tamed a lion? All right, let me think. He was not in Born Free. He's, he's not, he hasn't done the Gunther Gable Williams story. <laughs> <laughs> Tamed a lion mm -hmm. is not the same as being in a thing with a lion. Go ahead. Tamed it. Trained it. Took it from wild beast to domesticated cat. Well, now cat. you're expanding Really going, on, really yeah, going no. deep on this one. Yeah. Wow. No. He did not. That was Christopher Walken. Okay. <laughs> Christopher Walken actually. That tamed. makes sense. Is that yes. the best? Is that the best that Christopher Walken tamed the lion? There was a lion. <laughs> See, you can do it too. We had yeah. Pollock on. He, he, I gotta hear. He's trying so, to teach me how to do a that. lion. You know what? I, what when you're doing Walken, what you have to do is listen to Kevin Pollock do it. <laughs> right. That's the way. And then just mimic him. He said that the secret to doing. Uh, uh, Christopher Walken was to take a uh, one syllable word and make it two. Noah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, no. Have you ever acted with him? <laughs> no. I, I'd that would like be a trip. To, would yeah. that not be a trip? Yeah, I really would. Because you have, have to, to be on your toes. Because toes. Because <laughs> you don't know when he's going to stop a sentence. Yeah. That's a terrible Christopher Walken. Yes, it is. So thank you very much for <laughs> really bad. Worse so, than mine. I feel better about myself. So, so, and that's why I do it. I'm here to make people feel better about themselves. Screw you, Brian Cranston. Nice guy or not yeah, nice guy. Yeah. So, Resting meme I, face, don't forget. So yeah. before you go, I realized something about the two iconic characters here. Even though George Costanza was in a comedy and you as Walter White were in a drama, your characters had a lots of things in common. Would you like to hear? I would. Common? Okay, Come so on. first of all, both steal. Walter White stole a Volvo, a Volvo to get home, right? George stole a, uh, a, a hat from somebody's apartment and a clock so he could get back into the apartment with a no girl. I have no memory of this. Okay. Okay. I have no memory of You both poisoned people. I you, did slip a guy on Mickey. That's no, you're also son of Jesse Pinkman, and your wife died on the show with the with envelope. She was poisoned. His so wife Susan, the, your wife-to-be, right? But his wife didn't die. Walter White. No, I mean, he's poisoned wife. someone. I said, you poisoned someone. Oh, poisoning. poisoned someone, yes. Poisoning, okay. You both yeah. have aliases. Yes. Right? Heisenberg, Art Vandele. Right. <laughs> right. Sure. right? You both faked being disabled. You, you I'm faked being a spin in, a fugue, in a fugue state. Yeah. Yes. George uh, had a cane and realized he could access to the private bathrooms, etc. if he used it, so he played dis disabled. Yes. Correct? All yeah. right. You're both impatient. You lashed out at Skyler. You said, right, right now what I need is for you to climb down out of my ass. Can you do that? Will you do that for me, honey? <laughs> and George said to Gwen, who was trying to break up with him, you're giving me this, not me, it's you. I invented the not you, it's me. I mean, so very similar. And both of you were robbed. You were robbed and managed to keep $9 million. He was robbed of $8 million in a wallet by a woman who tied him to a bed because that's all he had on him. Wow. Pretty amazing, right? I wonder if there's it's some virtually kind of, the same character. The same <laughs> character. So what I'd like to do is an exercise, though, because yeah. this, this would be really interesting. But, you know, in a way, I should have had six <laughs> others. <laughs> and by the way, is it, true, is it true that they were looking at possibly Matthew Moder uh, Broderick for Walter Ryan? They were looking at everyone, Steve Zahn, uh, Matthew Broderick. There were several different people that they were looking at. And it, it, it was only because Vince Gilligan... Uh, was my champion to get this because I happened to do an episode of the X-Files where he wrote that episode and the character he wrote that I played was a despicable human being, but despite that, you still had some sympathy for him and you didn't want him to suffer. And he felt that that was the foundation right. of where he wanted to take Walter White, that despite the wow. wickedness of where he would go, people would still ascribe to being in his camp. Maybe. You know, just as a great tribute, if I may, to how I really know 
how the business works and what things are going to go and what are not. I don't think I've ever told you this. Brian and I were doing a play together around the time he was doing the pilot <laughs> for Breaking Bad. And he very casually said to me, yeah, I've done this pilot. If it goes, it shoots in New Mexico. And, you know, I'm probably be spending a lot of time in New Mexico. I said, what's it about? He said, well, I play a chemistry teacher who's uh, dying of cancer. So to provide for his family, I start uh, cooking crystal meth. And I said, yeah. Hey, don't buy any property. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you don't, you don't want to. He's not the guy to yeah, buy from I, am not, I, I would not be the guy to, or, to oversee your, your cap system. I would not be that guy. But if you read that script. I would have been blown been away by it. Of course I would. Of and course that's, would. that's being, and by the way, okay, so, so I got so two iconic yeah. characters here. I just want to see, because you could cry on, on cue. How quickly you can both get into that character. How quickly you can get into Walter White and Jason can get into George. Three, two, one, go. Well, I just Say have my to, name. I just have to <laughs> put on glasses. He has to shave his head. That's not Walter White. <laughs> so, that's, and, that's, that's not Walter White. That's Walter. That's not Heisenberg. And first of all, you know, why Heisenberg? <laughs> why Heisenberg? And, what, and what's with the hat? Yeah. What was with the hat? You talk a lot, little man. Oh, I'm, I'm scared. I'm supposed to be scared now, <laughs> right? I don't live in his world. I don't, you know, blue meth. Was the blue a mistake or did you plan that? <laughs> did it come out blue and you went, eh, let's leave it. Came out blue. Why not? Because, by the way, I would watch the George Costanza uh, <laughs> Walter White interview show. Can you imagine day. those Can two you together? Ima if, if Jesse he Pinkman would, yeah. had been George Costanza. Yeah. <laughs> That yeah. show would be on the air today. By God. And by the way, the other thing you both had going for you, increased hair loss. Anyway, thank you for coming wow. in. God, you're, it's such a hard. You know you what's amazing out about on, you? Huh? I look at you. The hair. And, and even That's though, what you went out on. <laughs> That's what you decided was the little filigree you needed to put on the interview. Ooh, the hair. Filigree. Yeah. Has to do with retirement. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh -huh. I thank you for coming in. The amazing Thanks, thing you. about you is I always see you as a nice, warm guy, loving guy. And it's, it's, I so can not. never relate to you as Heisenberg. <laughs> it's so hard. Even when I, when I saw you with the head shaved, it's so hard. And then you watch that character. It's such a disengagement. You did such a job with that character. It was so truthful. And so, oh, so honestly, you. that guy, that it's hard to connect you to that it's, character. I'm telling you, the writing is the key. Everything. It leads you. And, and sometimes you look at a script like that and you go, don't mess it up. Just Is it coming back again? Because Malcolm's coming back again, right? You're doing a Malcolm reunion? We're talking about the possibility of doing some something Where they are 20 today. years later to see what this family is up to. Because the boys now and Malcolm are all grown. Sure. And so they have their own lives and things like that. So it's kind of curious. Very cool. Well, thank you. Thanks for all the stuff. Can I tell there, I'm going to end it with one other thing, too. Um, I hope, in in my own way, that you find the time that you want for you and i pray to god that you never stop being a storyteller because you are one of the best i've ever seen mm -hmm. there is nothing you can't do and you are one of the guys and i'm lucky to know a few of them we're lucky enough to know a few of them who reach a level of extraordinary success and everyone around them goes yeah yeah good i appreciate that man you're you know what? you're, you're a, a great pal my thank friend. you man Helen Mirren said he was one of the greatest American actors. Who? Knock on what Helen Mirren? You. Oh, Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, you know, just like Trump, just like Trump, uh, you know, Hannibal Lecter is a big fan of his, by the way. <laughs> also, also. Good night, everybody. Drive safely. Love Helen.